Radio Canada takes a deep dive into mobile abortions in rural Newfoundland. WSIB in Ontario has shortchanged tens of thousands of workers with their owed. The driver who crashed into the humble Broncos bus, killing 16 people, fights his deportation. A British soldier has been charged with the murder of a Manitoba man in downtown Toronto. Fire in Vietnam kills 56 and Mexico hears arguments about aliens. Good morning. It's Thursday, September 14th. I'm Nora, and here are your headlines. First, we start with a feature by Patrick Butler for Radio-Canada that takes a deep look into the world of abortion access in Newfoundland's Bible Belt. Didn't know Newfoundland had a Bible Belt? Well, you should know this. <laughs> Butler followed a small medical team that goes hundreds of kilometers all over Newfoundland to perform abortions in rural communities. The story starts with a single mother who had traveled 600 kilometers to end her pregnancy. She sought out the service partly because her ultra-religious family was unaware of what she was doing. Another patient tells Butler that she is super fertile. She became pregnant twice while taking birth control. Her doctor refused her request to have a tubal ligation, saying that she was too young to make that decision. Three years later, there she was in the mobile clinic having her third abortion. She drove seven hours to get to that clinic. Today, the clinic was helping folks from the center and west of the island. The space is too small for patients to have a support person with them inside. The woman behind the mobile clinic is Rolanda Ryan. She's been doing abortions in Newfoundland Labrador since 1999. She bought the only private abortion clinic in the province from Henry Morgenthaler in 2010. And since 2017, she goes on the road with a doctor and several technicians alternating between Cornerbrook and Grand Falls, Windsor to set up her mobile clinic. They're able to set up at clinic and tear it down in 48 hours and are careful to not broadcast their location too far. They know that they'd face protests from locals for who religion is still very important. Next to Ontario, where a quote-unquote coding error made by the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board has meant that more than 100,000 injured workers have been shortchanged $42 million. The article by Josh Rubin at the Toronto Star says that the WSIB will be contacting the affected workers. Workers will have to log into the WSIB portal to confirm their identity. Rubin reports that most of the payments will be under $70, but there will be some payments that are as high as $40,000. Unfortunately, the article is paid so that's all I can tell you about this. If you've received a WSIB payout in the last 20 years, maybe look out for some mail. Next to Calgary, where Jaskarat Singh Sidhu is fighting a deportation recommendation. Sidhu was the driver of the bus that crashed into the Humboldt Broncos hockey team five and a half years ago. In 2019, he was sentenced to eight years in jail. He pleaded guilty to dangerous driving, which led to the death of 16 people and injured 13 others. Canada Border Services Agency recommended that Sidhu be deported after he served his sentence. The decision now lies at the hands of the Immigration and Refugee Board. Sidhu has been granted full parole and has been working in construction in Calgary while he waits for the decision. Sidhu's lawyer argues that he's being punished for what he did rather than being treated based on his likely future actions. He is punished for what he did. He was sentenced to jail, but he's also suffered from it too. He's had PTSD and depression because of the crash. He's shown remorse and is unlikely to reoffend. all factors that his lawyer says should allow him to stay in Canada. At the time of the crash, Sidhu had just started driving truck. He was distracted by the load he was carrying, blew through a stop sign and put his truck right into the path of the oncoming Broncos bus. The case against Sidhu was prepared by federal lawyers who think that it is very strong and that he absolutely should be deported. Now to Toronto, where a British soldier has been charged with second-degree murder. Craig Gibson has been charged with the death of Brett Sheffield, a Manitoban who was in a downtown West neighborhood when he was killed at the end of August. Sheffield had been assaulted. The news that this person is a member of the British Army came directly from the British Army. They confirmed that one of their soldiers had been charged with second-degree murder in Toronto and refused to comment further. The Canadian press has said no further information either about what is known about the interaction or about the victim. 
Now to international news, first to Vietnam, where 56 people have been killed in a fire at an apartment building in Hanoi. The building was nine floors high and about 150 people lived in it. 70 people were rescued and just under 40 people were injured. Hanoi has a very high population density. Streets are narrow, which can pose a challenge for emergency vehicles, and apartments usually have windows at the front and back of them. Usually, those windows have security bars. All were aggravating factors in the tragedy, reports The Guardian. This building in particular had no emergency escape route, as it was under 10 floors. At 10 floors, those emergency escape routes become mandatory. In 2022, 32 people were killed in Ho Chi Minh City when a fire broke out in a karaoke parlor. That tragedy triggered a new round of safety regulations. And finally, to Mexico. Legislators heard testimony yesterday that included being presented with the remains of non-human beings that a journalist and a UFO enthusiast have claimed are extraterrestrials. I feel like I have to include this story. First off, some of you do let me know that you think that this podcast is too depressing, which, yeah, of course it is. It's the news. But God, imagine that these are actually aliens and everyone who's paying attention is just reacted by saying, no, they're not. I can't take that chance. So here you go. Here is all the alien news that you need for today. The bodies that were presented to the Mexican legislators are tiny. They have three fingers on each hand and elongated heads. They look like they're preserved in concrete or made in some guy's basement, frankly. The UFO enthusiast is Jamie Mawson. He claims that they were found in Peru in 2017 near the ancient Nazca lines. Analysis by scientists at the National Autonomous University in Mexico date the bodies to be about a thousand years old. Al Jazeera throws water on the story by reminding us that similar finds in the past turned out just to be mummified children. The university had made a statement in 2017, which it republished yesterday, saying that the National Laboratory of Mass Spectrometry with Accelerators was only involved to figure out how old these things were. You cannot use mass spec to determine if something is an alien, or at least you can't yet. This is not Mosin's first alien rodeo. In 2017, he claimed to find aliens in Peru, but the prosecutor's office found that they were actually just dolls. Julieta Fierro, a researcher at the Institute of Astronomy at the National Autonomous University of Mexico, was skeptical and pointed out that if they were really aliens, wouldn't have Peru fought to have kept the bodies there? Shouldn't have Peru's ambassador been invited to this unveiling? Curious indeed. But hey, let's be honest. We need this. We, we could use a good distraction. I jumped over some climate news this morning to give you this. (laughs) Those are your headlines for Thursday, September 14th. I'm Nora. You're listening to this podcast at SandyNora.com on the Real News Network podcast feed and wherever you get your podcasts. And increasingly, you might be seeing it on Instagram because I've been like, hey, whatever. I'm going to start sharing this on Instagram. I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you tomorrow, which also happens to be Friday.